let's get on to this video. Welcome back to another episode of Oculus 101. So there must be over 20 plus VR headsets on the market at this point. I won't even attempt to list them all, but trust me when I say there are a lot. So is this new VR headset from Oculus worth the money? Well in this video, I will be talking about the pros and cons of the headset, along with giving you all the info I can on the device. So if you have not yet bought this, or are planning to get it for Christmas 2020, or if you are thinking about upgrading from another headset, such as the Rift CV1 or the Rift S, this should be of some use to you. But first, a quick story. So back in mid-September, my Oculus Rift CV1 died on me. To be more accurate, the right speaker crapped out, and because fixing it would be difficult, it having something to do with the wiring and the headband, I decided to immediately buy the Oculus Rift S. Well, the following morning, as I was getting ready to head out to Best Buy to pick it up, the Oculus Quest 2 was announced. Crazy timing, right? So now I was in a real predicament. Do I go ahead with my purchase of the Rift S, or do I wait until mid-October for the Quest 2? I had also just bought a new gaming PC and really wanted to use it for PC VR games. So being super impatient, I went ahead and reluctantly picked up the Rift S. I did get a chance to use it for several days before my new computer actually died on me. See my video of DDG's rants and raves for the story on that. And I was shocked at how much better the headset fit and how much better everything looked through the lenses. The Rift S was phenomenal, but after my new computer crapped out, I decided to return the Rift S and wait for the Oculus Quest 2 after all. So was it the right decision? Let's find out. So let's get down to the pros and cons of the new Quest 2, and we'll start with the positives. Pro number one, packaging and presentation. So straight out of the box, I really dug the white color and the weight of the unit. I mean, mostly all of my tech stuff is black, so this was a nice change of pace. It wasn't too heavy despite all the tech inside it, and it seems pretty well balanced when wearing it using the Elite strap. The box is small and was enjoyable to open and unpack the device, as silly as that sounds. Pro number two, wireless and inside out tracking. So coming off the Rift CV1, I knew having a wireless headset was going to be amazing, but boy, do I really enjoy it. I had my Rift CV1 for almost three years before it died, so the freedom of not being tethered makes this thing worth it for that reason alone. This is an obvious pro, but I feel I needed to mention it because of the fact that it's a wireless headset is flat out awesome. There is a drawback to this feature though, which I will go into a bit later. Then there's the inside out tracking. Some people actually prefer outside in tracking, but personally I hated having to use two or three of my USB ports and have the added responsibility of positioning the base stations around my play area, which half the time I had a problem with anyway. Is the inside out tracking perfect? No, but it's damn close and the ability to use the pass-through technology is fantastic. All I have to do is double tap the side of my headset at any time and I can see my room without having to take the headset off. So if I want to take a drink or something, it's easy. The wireless feature is amazing and the tracking works well enough to be considered an awesome feature. Pro number three, the display resolution. One of the main selling points for me besides the fact that this device has no wire was a substantial increase in the display resolution and FPS. I had been on the Rift CV1 for so long, and the clarity had always bothered me, especially since my first experience in VR was on a Samsung Gear VR with a Samsung Galaxy phone attached to it. The Samsung Gear VR looked really good compared to the Rift CV1. I would even joke when I first got the original Rift that the phone VR was better. The Gear VR had far better image quality, but to be fair, the OG Rift had been out for some time at that point. It felt like taking a step backwards in that regard on the CV1. So, when I heard the Quest 2 was going to have a far superior display resolution, I was excited. Aside from the wireless feature, I want things to look as good as possible. I want to see things crystal clear, and I want the widest field of view. And while the field of view really has not improved that much, the clarity has. The screen door effect is essentially gone, and the display is a huge step up from the original CV1. Pro number 4. Link cable works great. One of my main concerns during the waiting period was how would the link cable work? Since I've never owned a Quest 1, I had no idea if data transfer through a USB cable would degrade things far too much. 
I was hearing all these people say how the link cable would compress the data to the point where gameplay would be negatively, noticeably affected. Then it would reduce things down to 72 hertz, and I would consequently feel motion sickness. All these reports from people telling me if you want to play PC VR, to either stick with the Rift S due to its display port connection, or get a Valve Index or the HP Reverb G2. Because PC VR was going to be important to me, if the Oculus Quest 2 couldn't do it well, then this thing would almost be a total loss. While I'm here to tell you that the link cable works great, as a perfectionist by nature, believe me, I would tell you if using the link cable is a problem, and it certainly is not. In fact, I honestly can't tell much of a difference. All I would say is that sharpness is somewhat reduced and perhaps colors are dulled down slightly. But FPS issues? I see none. To me it works almost perfectly, and that's a great thing seeing as how it was a major concern going in. The Quest 2 works great for PC VR, so don't listen to what people might be saying about it. Pro number 5. The Hardware. The specs on the Oculus Quest 2 are remarkable at its price point. It uses the latest Snapdragon Qualcomm XR2 chip, has 6 gigs of RAM, and a display resolution of 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye. It also has an experimental 90Hz refresh rate option, but it only works in the home screen. This is something that will be added as an update soon, so you can play VR games in 90Hz. Hopefully quite soon. With the ability to purchase a headset for $299 for the 64 gigs of memory, or step it up to $399 for the 256 gigs of storage, this really helps put a VR headset in people's homes. Oculus is going to bring virtual reality to people who just a few years ago could never afford it due to needing a high-end gaming PC and then shelling out an additional 400 bucks for the headset. The tech inside this headset is impressive, and it's worth noting that they did this at a $299 price point. Pro number 6, the built-in speakers. This was something I was going back and forth with. In fact, I originally had this listed down as a con, because initially, I really thought the speakers were rather weak and I could barely hear the music and sound effects come through well. About the only thing that would come through decent was people's voices. But after using the headset more and more, I found that for what they are, the built-in speakers are rather good and do have overall nice sound quality. They are certainly not perfect, but good enough. This became especially apparent when my daughter was using the device and I could hear everything coming through the speakers from across the room. It really depends on the game you're playing. Some games I can't really hear the music and sound effects clearly, but other games I can. But almost always, people's voices come through loud and clear. It would be nice if the loudness was just a bit stronger, but after thinking about this quite a lot, I'm going to say the speakers that built into the strap are great. So while there are many great things about the headset, there are some cons, and we need to talk about those things too before we make a final decision here on if you should buy it or not. Con number one, dead pixels. I have been asking around, and so far, I haven't heard anyone else have this problem. But for me, one of the first issues I noticed was my display does indeed have a dead pixel out in a noticeable area. It's tiny and wasn't worth returning the device over, but like I said, I am a perfectionist, and something like this does bother me a bit. Hopefully I am one of the few who received this device with a dead pixel, but I had to mention it because it could be more widespread than I'm aware of, and don't be surprised if you get one with a dead pixel or two. Con number two, not all games are cross by. This was something I wasn't even aware of and didn't think was going to be a problem, but I was astonished to find out that not all Oculus games you have purchased on your computer can be downloaded for free on the headset. The first game that I wanted to grab aside from Echo VR was Onward. Well, I already paid the price for that game on my PC, but I had to shell out another additional 30 bucks to play it wirelessly on the Quest 2. This is because they claim the game was remade to run well on the Quest, and that's why you have to rebuy it. Same goes for games like Cyrento VR and Beat Saber. About the only game I have that didn't require a repurchasing was Star Wars Vader Immortal. So this was a big drawback given the fact that I have several games on my computer that I have to rebuy all over again if I want to play them without a wire attached to me. This was a big negative, and it's not something most people would even know about. So if you have a Rift CV1 or Rift S, you can be sure most of the games you own will have to be purchased all over again just to play them wirelessly. Con number three, nosebleed, light leaks. Yeah, this is something that can really detract from the VR experience, and it's pretty bad on the Quest 2. Where your nose meets the headset, you will find a pretty large gap in between the grooves of your nose. So, a lot of light leaks in from there. I guess this will depend on how big your nose is, but for me it's enough to be annoying. 
This was far less a problem for me on the Rift S. Not a huge negative, but it is indeed an issue. Con number four, battery life. The battery will last you about two hours of playtime for most games. For me, that's not really a big deal because I don't think I'll ever be playing for longer than that at one time. But if you are new to VR, or if you are younger and plan on playing for longer periods of time, you're going to have to buy the attachable battery or the Elise strap with the additional battery. At least that's an option, but it would have been nice if you could get a little more time out of the built-in battery. The more I think about it, it's like Oculus wanted to give people a cheap way to buy into VR. But in the end, you will spend even more money to have all the bells and whistles of a complete headset, like an additional battery, better strap, and a real headset. Bogus. Con number five, IPD adjustment limitations. With the Quest 2, there are three different settings you can choose from depending on how far apart your eyes are. The reason for this is because the Quest 2 uses a single panel fast switching LCD display as opposed to two independent screens within the headset. So, if your eyes don't fall within one of these three settings, you could be in trouble. Although I am hearing that there are some workarounds to digitally change the IPD adjustment the way the Rift S does it. This was never an issue with the original Rift because it had a slider on the bottom of the headset that you could use to get things just right and had two independent screens inside of it. My guess is that this was another cost cutting measure that was done to keep the price lower. For 85% of the population, you should fall into one of these three settings. The other issue is how you actually position the IPD. You must reach inside and manually push the lenses apart, which is kind of clunky and just odd to be honest. Like you would think it would have been very easy to just have a slider button on the bottom of the unit to change the distance of the lenses apart from one another. But nevertheless, it is what it is. Con number six, controller sensors. In order to increase the battery life on the controllers, the developers decided to use less sensors in the rings of them. This is due to complaints that the original Quest controllers died too quickly. They claim to have done things in such a way that you get exactly the same kind of tracking, but I highly doubt that is true. The biggest issue I have had is when playing onward. Occasionally, when I move the controllers close to my face to aim down the reticle, I experience tracking problems. It doesn't always happen, but it happens often enough to cause me to miss out on being able to shoot someone. I also hear that it can be an issue in Beat Saber when you're really flailing the controllers around. The increased battery life is nice, and the tracking works well enough, but it's not perfect by any stretch. Con number seven, Facebook is a must. One of the biggest complaints people have been mentioning is the fact that you need to link a Facebook account to use the headset. Now personally, I don't find this to be a big deal. I already have a Facebook account, and I already use Facebook. Not to mention Facebook now owns Oculus, so you had to see this one coming. But because enough people have voiced a complaint about it, I figured I would add this to the list. If you have a problem needing a Facebook account to use this device, well, I guess you can't use it then. Con number eight, graphics are scaled down. Remember that wireless drawback I mentioned earlier? So when using the device standalone, I notice a significant difference when it comes to the game graphics. However, I am used to PC VR, and it makes sense that developers would have to undercut the graphics substantially, not just because of the onboard processor, but because of the drain on the battery. Still, when compared to PC VR, it's an obvious noticeable difference. When I tried Echo VR for the first time, I was a little caught off guard at how things looked, even when it comes to the colors and lighting. This is not to say it's horrible, not at all. In fact, you could say it's impressive that it even comes close to computer graphics. But for games like Echo VR and Onward, if you're used to playing on a PC with a wired connection, you will notice the difference. The best way I could put this is that the native games just look simple by design. These games are still worth playing wirelessly though, and to be honest with you, I would rather the hit on the graphics as opposed to playing a game like Echo VR with a wire getting wrapped around my legs every two minutes. Other noteworthy mentions. The $40 add-on Elite Strap. I only have a few things worth mentioning here. One is I truly feel that for this device, they should have replicated the exact same head strap design that the Rift S uses. I really loved how that headset fit, and even if it would have cost a little more as an add-on, I would have gladly paid the price. At first, I didn't really like the Elite Strap, but once I got used to it, I found it to be rather nice. Being able to tighten or untighten the wheel on the back makes putting it on and taking it off a breeze. Again, I wouldn't have preferred the Rift S design for the head strap, but the Elite Strap is pretty decent as well. I never even bothered to use the standard strap, so I can't speak to that. The link cable will improve. It has been mentioned that the link cable will get better and better through future updates. 
such as unlocking the ability to run games in 90 hertz. Currently it seems fine to me, but if you are worried about the link cable not working as well as a dedicated display port cable, don't fret, it will only get better from here. The lenses don't fog up. I don't know if this is even a real thing or not, but I think the lenses are anti-fog lenses. I have had no fogging of the lenses since I started using it, which is great because that was always a problem on my CV-1. So should you buy this if you don't already have a VR headset? Absolutely. I would say anyone who does not already have a VR headset should definitely buy this. Despite the fact that I listed more cons and pros, it's still a fantastic device. I would say do not buy the HTC Vive or Vive Pro. I have tried those headsets and this current Oculus headset blows them away. This is especially great choice if you have never done VR before. The easy setup and user friendliness of it make it the best choice for a newcomer. 256 or 64 gigs. Personally, I purchased the 256 because I plan on keeping this for a long time and I did not want to run out of space. But most games are between a gig to three gigs currently, so you could certainly get away with a 64 gig device. This is especially true if you plan on using it with your PC also. For any games that are larger, you could always just put them on your computer and the smaller games on the headset. If money is tight or you don't want to spend a lot straight out of the gate, go with a 64 gig headset. It should be just fine. Should you upgrade from another headset? Well, that depends on which headset you have. If you are upgrading from the Rift CV1, I would say absolutely 100% do it. This is a big enough jump to justify getting it. I would say definitely get the Quest 2 as opposed to the Rift S because Oculus plans on phasing out the Rift S in spring 2020. However, if you currently own a Rift S, my advice to you would be to stay with that. Unless being able to play certain games wirelessly is important to you, the Rift S is still an amazing headset. The better display on the Quest 2 does not blow away the Rift S in that regard. And honestly, the S really looks good when looking through the lenses. So if you have a CV-1, you gotta get this amazing device. If you have the Rift S, you should wait for the next great thing coming out, probably in no time at all at the rate these companies keep blasting out these headsets. What's the final verdict? If you have been waiting for the right time to buy a VR headset, well the time is finally here. The Oculus Quest 2 is a home freaking run. Sure, there are a lot of cons mentioned here, but none of them are reasons enough not to buy the device. All it really means is that the headset is not super perfect, but in my opinion it comes close enough. I absolutely love the Quest 2, and it was well worth the money. I can't express enough how much I enjoy virtual reality. It has a way of transporting you from your living room to amazing, wonderful worlds that you could only dream of. VR is getting better and better all the time. To people who say VR is dying or dead, you could not be more wrong. As a lifelong gamer, VR has quickly become my absolute favorite way to game. It's mesmerizing and jaw-dropping at the same time. Being able to talk to people in games such as VR Chat or Alt Space or even in Echo VR is such a pleasure. I have made so many friends this way. I cannot say enough how much I enjoy my new Quest 2. So to all the critics who said that the Quest 2 is a fail, I completely disagree. And I hope to anyone who finds this video, you take my advice and go out and get yourself a brand new Oculus Quest 2 right away. And to those of you who recently purchased the original Quest 1, I am truly very sorry. I know that must be a serious bummer. I wish I could speak to whether or not upgrading from the Quest 1 is a move you should make, but I have not used that device so I don't really know. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in making a decision on what to do. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a like. It helps YouTube to know to promote the video further. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe to us and turn the bell on so you're notified when more of our videos drop. And if you really, really like the vid, we have our PayPal account so you can send us a donation too. This will help us to continue bringing you more content. And if you do decide to donate, let us know in the comments section and we will shout you out in one of our future videos. So if you have any questions, just ask away in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. So once again, thanks for watching this episode of Oculus 101. This is Dave from Double Dragon Gaming, signing off.